Hi Riley, my name is Dr. Kramer. I'm the superintendent here at London City Schools. Just wanted to let you know we've heard a lot about you and we've certainly thought a lot about you over these last couple of months. We miss you here. Uh, I love this project and I'm very happy to sit down and read a book for you today. And the book I am reading is The Pirates of Scurvy Sands. And this is by Johnny Duddle. D uh, Dud, 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 Dudley, Dudley, Dud, I don't know. Riley, D-U-D-D-L-E. That's who it's by. <laughs> All right. The Pirates of Scurvy Sands. Matilda lived in Dolon Sea, a charming seaside town, bleak all through the winter. But in the summer, folks came down. They frolicked in the sea and played in the arcades. They sizzled in the midday sun and dug with plastic spades. Matilda had a pen pal who sailed the scurvy sea. A pirate boy named Jim Ladd, he sent letters frequently. They came in old green bottles that, just, that she fished up on her line. Jim didn't have a phone, but his notes would do just fine. Dear Tilda, we're going on a voyage, a special pirate trip. We'll pick you up tomorrow if ye can board our ship. You're, we're on our way to Dolan Sea, sailing through the night. I'll see you shortly after dawn by the early morning light from Jim Ladd. Can I go to Survey Sands? Matilda, at, Matilda asked her dad. Uh, mm, I suppose you could. Those pirates aren't so bad. Matilda packed her swimsuit, some shorts and summer tops, her toothbrush, snorkel, sunblock, and her new flip-flops. At dawn, Matilda's parents took her to the harbor side, past the yachts to where the Jolly Roger ship was tied. Arr, Matilda! Jim Yad yelled, swinging on a rope. He landed thud beside her and said, Shall we elope? They skimmed across the ocean, three days beneath the sails. They sang sh sea shanties, played I Spy, and made up pirate tales. Land ahoy! yelled Jim Ladd. I've spotted scurvy sands. Furl the sails, shake out a reef, hard port toward dry land. My name is Captain Oladay. I hope you all have fun. Make sure to slap your lotion on before going in the sun. Ride on the Big Dipper, play it on the sand. You can shop for a new hook if ye lost your hand. If ye like to dig, ye could search for Mad Jack's gold, buried deep beneath the sand since the days of old. We've been digging here for years and years, but none who've looked have found that treasure that. Mad Jack McMuddle dropped into the ground. Here's your scurvy chalet. It's made from broken ships. There's a good view of the ocean and a whiff of fish and chips. Tomorrow's morning's Cruncher Club, so bring your pirate kids. They'll be grub and shanties after dark and wrestling with the squids. They call me Ratface Rodney. I wear a crimson jacket. If you need a helping hook, just wave and make a racket. Jo the Jolly Rogers dropped their bags, and Jim's mom made some tea. What a lovely view, and just a ship's length from the sea. The next day, Jim and Tilda went to Cruncher Club. But amongst the other pirate kids, there was a big hubbub. I don't think she's a pirate, cursed Katie mumbled. The others all agreed with her, shook their heads, and grumbled. That girl can't read a compass. She don't know port from starboard. She won't pass the pirate test. She don't know east from west. Barnacle Bob, the lifeguard, sat up and rubbed his eyes. He thought he'd seen a lubber, much to his surprise. I'm sure I see one swimming in the scurvy sea, but maybe it's a mermaid with this spyglass I can't see. Can she wield a cutlass? 
Is she good at digging? Can she shout "R" as she's swinging from the rigging? Philippia McCavity was shocked by what she saw. She was blinded by the sparkles as Matilda passed her door. Her teeth are clean. This will not do. I'd really like to pull a few. I'll feed her gum and lollipops and all the sweets that I've got. I'll hide her pesky toothbrush, then I'm sure her teeth will rot. Old man Grumps looked anxious as he plucked hairs from his beard. I ain't seen nothing like it. That little girl is weird. My monkey can't find any lice, but she says her hair smells very nice. I'll mucky up her gleaming nails. My scurvy nail bar never fails. Jim's dad's tummy rumbled. I need to get some grub. My stomach's feeling peckish. Let's eat at this here pub. Do you want some hardtack, shark brains, pickled eggs, sea gulp soup, dodo, dodo burgers, battered parrot legs? <laughs> Matilda turned a little green and ordered the grilled fish with weevil flavored mashed potatoes served on a clean dish. At a nearby table, Betty Bilge was not impressed. Have ye seen how neatly that little girl is dressed? She don't like maggoty cookies or shark brains steeped in brine. That girl's a fussy eater. She act like a bit like mine. She's a bad example with her knife and fork. If mine learn table manners, all my private friends will talk. I don't think she's a pirate. She's clean and too polite. Since this place ain't for lovers, it really isn't right. Captain Day called the Jolly Rogers to reception. I've had complaints, but as you know, it's all about perception. We know that she's no pirate, and I'm afraid it just won't do. Bringing lubbers to scurvy sands, she ain't part of the crew. Can she at least do pirate stuff to put their minds at rest? Dig for treasure, fire a cannon, take the pirate test? The treasure! Tilla whispered. This portrait holds a clue. We'll need a compass and Jack's map. I know what we should do. I know my east from west. I do. But Jack McMuddle never knew his left from right or east from west. He didn't pass the pirate test. Follow me and bring a spade. I think you'll like the plan I've made. Reading Mad Jack's map, Matilda walked ahead. Jim Ladd marched along behind, listening as she said. To the west of Scurvy Sands sank my ship with all its hands. I dragged my treasure chests ashore, where they shall lie ever, forevermore. Why, we heading east, said Jim, when Mad Jack's map says west. That's just it, Matilda said. Jack failed the pirate test. Using his mirror to check his tattoo, he always had a backward view. Ooh. I climbed along the jagged rocks, took off my coat, my shoes, and my socks. To drag the chest took all my strength, but drag I did a full ship's length. Four steps left and two steps right. Now dig real deep with all your might. Jim and Tilda dug a hole, and soon they heard a clunk. They found an enormous treasure chest from the ship that sunk over 200 years ago in those days of old when Mad Jack McMuddle buried his precious gold. Jim ran to join Matilda. Is the treasure near? X marks the... But, Matilda said, we need to dig right here. I think I read that out of order. She found old Mad Jack's treasure. Matilda is the best. She's an expert with a compass. She passed the pirate test. Matilda's got such pretty hair. I love her sparkly nails. I'm such a lover fan, you know. 
I'll miss her when she sails. Thank you for my pirate trip. I've memories I'll treasure. Anytime, Matilda. It was a scurvy pleasure. The pirates wailed and waved goodbye. Oh, I cannot help but cry. They fired their cannons, flintocks too, and watched the Matilda fade from view. Though Matilda had a lot of fun, she didn't mind the trip was done. She really couldn't wait to be land-loving back in Dull on Sea. And that's the end of The Pirates of Scurvy Sands. Riley, I hope you enjoyed the book. Like I said, we are really excited to put this project together for you, and we all miss you, and we are rooting for you.